Howdy readers, I'm Jason, this is Chapter and Verse, and I come to you today on Tag Tuesday with a tag. Uh, this is the character adaptation tag, uh, and it was created by a husband and wife booktubers, Ryan and Kristen, uh, over at Seeking Stories. And if I remember correctly, I think I was tagged in the original video, uh, which I'll link down below. Um, the idea is, uh, is pretty simple. So this tag deals with uh, adaptations of novels uh, or plays uh, for the big screen, or I suppose it could even be for the small screen. Um, and uh, what are your favorite uh, adaptations of characters? So not necessarily the work as a whole, but the character. What are your least favorite adaptations of characters? And which character adaptations do you feel are in their cinematic form and an improvement on the character um, as he or she appears on the page. I'm going to give two answers to each of these prompts and one runner up. Now the first one, uh, what are your two favorite character adaptations? And one of those two is uh, Anthony Hopkins as Stevens in The Remains of the Day which is based on uh, Kazuo Ishiguro's novel. Now the film was directed by James Ivory uh, and his films were more commonly known as Merchant Ivory films. Uh, Ismail Merchant was his uh, producing partner as well as his partner in real life. They've been together for decades and their production company was Merchant Ivory. And um, they were best known for adapting um, classic works by Henry James and E.M. Forster. Uh, but in 1993, they adapted The Remains of the Day. And Anthony Hopkins takes Stevens on the page. And let me just say that the novel is one of my favorite novels. But the film is one of the best films that I've ever seen. Uh, and it has a hell of a lot to do with Anthony Hopkins' performance. He is understated. He is uh, heartbreaking, um, and he walks this. His performance walks this fine line between um, keeping everything completely concealed and letting us, the viewer, know that um, that there is so much being concealed. I'm not sure how an actor does that, uh, how an actor communicates to an audience both that there are reservoirs of feeling um, going on inside him, uh, and then also uh, concealing all of the details of that feeling um, from us, from himself, from the people around him. And it is uh, one of my five favorite performances of, of all time. So, Anthony Hopkins in The Remains of the Day. The other of my two favorite uh, character adaptations is uh, Kate Blanchett in uh, Gillian Armstrong's film, Oscar and Lucinda. And that is based on Peter Carey's novel, Oscar and Lucinda, which um, I've talked about many times on this channel in the past. I've read it seven times. I've seen the film, I don't even know how many times. Um, now this was famously uh, Kate Blanchett's first performance. Um, I think Paradise Road may have come out before Oscar and Lucinda, but Oscar and Lucinda was filmed first. Uh, she had been primarily a stage actress at that point. Uh, this came out in 1997. And she just takes the character, and the character is magnificent on the page, uh, but she just takes the character and she imbues her with, um, with a sense of mischief, with a kind of twinkle. And also with a kind of ferocious feeling uh, when she defends Oscar from other people. Um, and she does it in many ways, all right, in many kind of registers and tones. Uh, it is just incredibly powerful. And, um, and at the end of the film, she has a scene near the end of the film where she is um, sitting alone and, uh, and she finds something that had belonged to Oscar at one point. And um, that moment is so devastating. Uh, I really feel like this is uh, Kate Blanchett's best performance to this day, which is crazy, right? Because she's won two Oscars and been nominated for loads of other Oscars. Um, but she was really not recognized for this. And, uh, and I think it's her best work. This came out in 1997. 
And then the last uh, one I'm gonna mention, uh, among my favorite character adaptations, the runner up, and I don't have the book with me, I don't own a copy of the book, but it is Kate Winslet as Sue Bridehead in uh, Michael Winterbottom's adaptation of Thomas Hardy's Jude the Obscure, which was just called Jude. It came out in 96, the year before Oscar and Lucinda, uh, three years after The Remains of the Day. And, um, and she takes Sue Bridehead as written and brings such vivacity uh, to the part. And, um, and there's just such, um, such playfulness and such whimsy, uh, such daring uh, in her performance as Sue Bridehead. And also there's just this kind of raw volcanic grief at, um, at one point in the film that is really difficult to watch. It's difficult to listen to, actually. Um, I don't know how Kate Winslet got there as an actress, um, got to that dark, dark place, but, uh, but she did. And just as I feel like Kate Blanchett's best work is in Oscar and Lucinda, I feel like Kate Winslet's uh, best work to this day uh, is, in, is in Jude, which is a movie that no one saw um, when it was released in theaters here in the States. It made oh, like $400,000. Is, is what it made at the box office. Um, so it was a um, tremendous flop financially, um, but it is one of the best movies of the 90s. Now, moving on to my least favorite character adaptations. Um, okay, so my first one of these is William Hurt in Franco Zeffirelli's adaptation of Jane Eyre, uh, which came out in the 90s. And what's funny about this is that I really love William Hurt as an actor. Um, I particularly love, he was in a film called The Doctor, Once Upon a Time, it was in the early 90s, uh, that was just terrific. And, uh, and I really, really loved him in Children of a Lesser God, which came out in the mid 80s, was directed, I think, by Randa Haynes. But even though Marley Matlin won an Oscar for Children of a Lesser God, I really feel like William Hurt was, um, the best thing about that film, uh, I think Marley Mountain was the heart of the movie, and I think that William Hurt um, was just the best thing about the movie. Uh, and when I read Jane Eyre for the first time, when I was, I think I was 18 years old, I just fell absolutely in love with it. I had talked about um, my experience reading Jane Eyre for the first time uh, in other places on this channel. But uh, I read it at a time when I had, I had just in the last year really fallen in love with cinema as an art form. And, uh, and so I found myself thinking, uh, if I were to adapt Jane Eyre for the screen, who would I cast as Jane and who would I cast as uh, Rochester? And I had decided that I really wanted to see uh, William Hurt play uh, Mr. Rochester. And, uh, and then he did. And he was terrible at it for some reason. I've never really been able to put my finger on why. I've only seen the film once or twice, so maybe I should watch it again. Maybe I would feel differently this time. But I've liked every other Rochester that I've seen, right? Toby Stevens and Kieran Hines, um, Michael Fassbender. But William Hurt just was wrong somehow for, for the part. I don't know if it was... Um, Oh, some kind of struggles that he had with the accent or what, but, uh, but I was just unimpressed. Um, my second of my least favorite character adaptations is Keanu Reeves in Dracula. So I really love Dracula, and I know not everybody does, um, but I'm a big fan of Dracula, and I really love Todd Browning's adaptation of it from the 1930s. Um, and I was really excited for Francis Ford Coppola's adaptation in the early 90s. Um, there was even like a, I don't own it anymore, but there was a, a kind of illustrated um, sort of making of, glossy making of book of uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula that I had once upon a time. And, uh, and there are many things that I love about uh, Coppola's film. Um, God, who's the actress who plays Lucy? Uh, and I think her name's Sadie Frost. She was magnificent in it. Um, Gary Oldman is magnificent in it. Uh, one known writer is less so, uh, but Keanu Reeves as Jonathan Harker is horrible. And, and that's the thing about Keanu Reeves. He is either really, really good, and I find that he is best in parts that require him to play a kind of, I don't know, spiritually elevated 
person, right? So I feel like he was really good in The Matrix. I feel like he was really good in Little Buddha, where he played Buddha. Um, but I think oftentimes in the rest of his parts, he is just wrong somehow. Um, I just, I, you know, I feel like he's an actor with very, very limited range. And, um, and I feel like there are a lot of actors with pretty limited range, but who are really good at what they do, right? John Wayne, Samuel L. Jackson. Um, but Keanu Reeves is somehow more limited than those other actors. And, um, I don't know. It's just being good in a film is a real tall order for Keanu Reeves. And he is terrible in Dracula. He is, uh, the worst thing about that film. And it's a film with a lot of problems. Um, and then my runner up for least favorite character adaptation is also... Keanu Reeves in um, Kenneth Branagh's adaptation of Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing. Now, I debated about including this because of all of the book-movie tandems I'm going to be talking about in this tag. Uh, it is the only one where I haven't read the play in its entirety. Um, I've read all of the other books, but, um, but I've seen Much Ado done on stage um, by multiple companies, uh, and I've read a good chunk of it when I was in um, college. But, uh, but I plan on doing Much Ado About Nothing for ShakeTube this year. Uh, but again, right, this is a brilliant film. It's a glorious movie. Um, Steve Donahue, in his version of this tag, talked about how much he loved uh, Michael Keaton as Dogberry in this, and I would agree. Uh, Keanu Reeves is terrible in this. I mean, he... I mean, the, the, you know, in, in his defense, I suppose, the character is pretty one note. But um, you could play that note well, I suppose. Um, but when you, you give a performance that's also one note or like, you know, 0.75 note, um, it just kind of brings the whole piece down just a little bit, which is a shame because, uh, the film is just, um, it's full of wonder and beauty and it's funnier than hell in places, but God, he's just, he's just terrible in this. Keanu Reeves, I'm sorry. It's just like the Keanu Reeves category. And then lastly, uh, two character adaptations that are improvements from the original on the page. Uh, and this was fun. This was a lot of fun. Um, so the first one I am going to choose is Hugh Dancy uh, playing Grig in uh, the Jane Austen Book Club, which is an adaptation of Karen Joy Fowler's novel. It's not a very good novel. It's not a terrible novel, but, uh, but it's pretty unremarkable, which is a shame because the premise is freaking brilliant. Um, the movie, which was written and directed by Robin Swicord, um, who I think also wrote the 94 adaptation of Little Women, and you guys know how I feel about that movie. I love it. Um, the movie is my ultimate comfort movie. Whenever I'm sick, whenever I'm depressed, uh, what have you, I put this in. Sometimes I'll watch this two times in one day, three times in two days. Um, I have seen it, I don't know how many times now. And my favorite part about the movie is Hugh Dancy as Grig. The character is wonderful, but his performance is just spot on. Um, you absolutely fall in love with this science fiction geek. Uh, who is converted to um, to the ways of Jane Austen. There is a lot that I could say about Hugh Dancy's performance in this, um, but I would urge you all to seek this out. I think it's on Netflix right now here in the States, so give it a look. Um, if you're a Jane Austen fan, if, even if you're not a Jane Austen fan, if you're just if you're just a book fan, and obviously if you're watching BookTube, you're a pretty bookish person. Um, you will love this. I have never met anybody who has watched this film and not fallen head over heels for it. So, uh, and like I said, Hugh Dancy is the best thing about it. The second uh, character adaptation that is an improvement on the original is uh, Warren Beatty in McCabe and Mrs. Miller, which is based on a, um, a pretty shitty Western called McCabe by Edmund Naughton. It's a book that's been out of print for donkey's years. Um, it deserves to be out of print. It's just not very good. Uh, I read it in college uh, after I had seen and fallen in love with this film, seen this film a number of times and eventually had fallen in love with it. And, uh, and I was expecting the book to just kind of blow my mind because um, I just assumed that a great film must come from great source material. Um, I was, I was very wrong. The novel is thin. It is unmemorable. Um, it's just, it's just not terribly interesting. 
and uh, and the character. There's just really nothing to the character, and uh, and somehow Warren Beatty. Uh, I don't know if it's you know if it's because the screenplay is so strong or what, but Warren Beatty takes that character and um, yeah, he just makes a kind of um, a kind of dim rogue uh, out of him, and uh, and you just love the guy, uh, even though he's he's not terribly bright. Um, he surrounds himself, or maybe not surrounds himself, but he partners himself. He hitches himself up to the wagon that is a character who is incredibly bright, and that is Mrs. Miller, played by uh, Julie Christie. Um, and Julie Christie's marvelous in this as well, but Warren Beatty in McCabe and Mrs. Miller, uh, which is my favorite Western of all time, just so you guys know. Um, it's actually my number two film of all time. Uh, and Warren Beatty in this is um, like Anthony Hopkins in The Remains of the Day. It's one of my five favorite performances of all time. So that was a no-brainer, choosing that. And then my runner-up for a character adaptation that is an improvement from the original on the page is uh, Keisha Castle Hughes playing uh, Pykea in Whale Rider, which is based on the novel by uh, Witi Ihimera, which I may be mispronouncing. Um, and if that's the case, I apologize. The book is good, but it's, uh, it's one of those novels that is more important than good or than well-written. Um, like I said, it's a, it's a decent novel, but the heart of it, the idea of it, um, the cultural significance of it, I think is, um, the best thing about the novel. Whereas the film, uh, this is a movie I saw twice in the theater when it came out, I think in 2002. I um, actually saw it uh, with Kelly, and that was way back when we were just friends. Um, she was nominated for an Oscar for this, Keisha Castle Hughes. She was nominated for Best Actress. She should have won the Oscar for this. Um, I defy anyone to watch this film and not bawl their damn eyes out at one part. And again, this is not a maudlin picture. It's not a sentimental picture. This is a movie that earns whatever tears um, are shed by its audience. And uh, and it's a film that really rests on the shoulders of this child actor. Like, I don't know how old she was when she made this, but I think she was 12 or 13. And for a child to be able to do that, to be able to carry a movie, um, it's a pretty rare thing. I just saw Jojo Rabbit uh, this weekend and was incredibly impressed with Jojo Rabbit. Not least because the, uh, the performance by the little boy uh, who plays the lead role, um, and he's, God, he's like in every damn scene in the movie, pretty much. Um, and his character arc is so complex, and the little kid just pulls it off so remarkably. Um, he is going to have a long career in Hollywood, is my, is my hunch. And, uh, and this is another example of that, right? A film that is uh, really, really ambitious, and really moving and um, is carried by by a child actor uh, and, and, and who just does a remarkable, remarkable job in the lead. So Keisha Castle Hughes and Whale Rider. If any of you have seen any of these films, um, I would love to hear what you think uh, of the performances that I've talked about or other performances in the movies. Um, and, uh, yeah, if any of you are as big a movie buff, uh, as you are a reader, uh, or close, uh, and you have any interest at all in doing this tag, I would, um, love to see your version of it. Uh, check out, uh, the channel Seeking Stories, where this tag originated. It's a wonderful new channel. Um, I don't even think they have a hundred subscribers yet, but they absolutely deserve that and more. So give them a look. I will link them down below. And uh, I will see you guys again uh, this coming weekend for Cromwellathon. Adios.